Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. I call this meeting to order for this regular meeting for April the 26th, 2022, 7 p.m. Result of the agenda for the April 26, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor uh, White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Three, <clears throat> result of the minutes of the April 5th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. Receptions and delegations, 4.1. Result of the uh, council open the public hearing for bylaw 19, 2022, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the replacement of pumper one and all required equipment. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? Carry. I call this hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against bylaw number 19, 2022, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the replacement of pumper one with all required equipment. I request that any person making representation to state their name and civic address. And so there is none and no one uh, attending by Zoom, uh, I then will uh, adjourn uh, the meeting if there's no other persons present. Uh, although, before I do adjourn, if any members of council do want to have any discussion, I'll open that up. Councillor Delorier. Um, how can this not be put upon uh, exempt properties as well? This borrowing? Mr. Ganita. I'm not sure to do that. It would require more work and I'd need to look into it. Is that something that we can look into? Yeah, I could look into it. Does that have to be done before the financial, or the, the, I guess the financial plan is complete, or is that just based on the borrowing? It's not connected with the financial plan at all. Okay. <clears throat> Anything further? Go ahead. I guess I'm still, you know, as I've said when we talked about this uh, past meeting, I'm still <coughs> not necessarily against eventually getting one, but I. But I think there's still too many question marks around what we're going to be looking like in the next year. To you know, this is this is a huge, huge payment, and I don't know if I'm necessarily sold that we shouldn't at least hold off for one more year. But I I definitely like to see what it would look like with uh, if we're able to put it on exempt. Um, you know, I just I just look at some of our other borrowings, and we're able to put it on. Um, you know the wellness center went uh, went went on exempt pro otherwise exempt property as well. So if you can do it for a pool, I'm sure you can do it for a fire truck. But I'll def find out what administration has to say about that. Further discussion? Okay, Tony. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Moffat. Yes, I'm, I'm leaning towards Councilor Deloria's decision there. That I just find it that I, I really haven't got enough information to base it. I Got lots of information on what it's going to be and why we need it, but I just didn't. to speak to the point of we're making a decision that there's an election in the fall here that we've kind of tied the hands of the next council that comes on board here. Whether that decision would be proper in the future or not, I don't know. I really would like to know the repercussions of not doing this at this time compared to doing it. I, I haven't got the facts to, to feel comfortable with that vote yet. Councillor uh, Morio. Um, I believe Chief Fedorchuk should have sent you a lot of package recently. That would have covered off a lot of that information that you're seeking. I um, did, and I read the entire thing, yes. Okay. 
Okay. Further discussion? So then upon uh, hearing all persons, uh, or non-persons, I guess, uh, I do adjourn uh, the, the hearing. Result of the council open the public hearing bylaw 19, 2022, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure of borrowing funds for the replacement of pumper one with all required. I'm sorry, I'm, that's we've already read this one here. I thought there would be a resolution to reopen. That's five two one one. Result of the uh, council open. Uh, so sorry, it's I it's I, it has to be closed. So I'm reading the same thing again. Yeah. So I cl uh, closed public hearing bylaw 19, 2022 at 7.06 p.m. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by, who was that? Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? The hearing is closed. Um, just on the agenda, it was, has it moved around here on me a little bit? Because yeah, there's some things I've... I'm kind of mixed up because I am in. Uh, I was doing a double scroll and it moved things. So just give okay. Me a sec. So because I I see we have communications moved in the, in the middle of the delegation. So yeah. Or the, sorry, or the just, hearing. Sorry. You want me just to go to five point one? Just give me two seconds just to move things. Okay. It just got. <clears throat> So yeah, I moved the public hearings back to three Where they were before? Yes. Okay, good. That. Like no, I didn't know if that moved while I was talking. Yeah, I, I was doing a scroll and it did not like that. It, it dragged it by accident. All right. Well, we're we're back in action here. So thank you. Uh, three point three. Result of Council Open uh, 2022 Financial Plan Public Hearing. Moved by Councilor Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. So I call the hearing to order the purpose of the hearings here represented a representation for or against bylaw number. The purpose of the hearing is to provide an overview of uh, the 2022 financial plan and to allow any interested person to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection regarding the 2022 financial plan. I, I request that any person making representation to the hearing to state their name and civic address. So with that, I will uh, we'll move uh, towards the 
uh, actual presentation of the uh, budget and uh, CFO Ganita will be presenting the budget uh, for 2022. Mr. Gidea. Sorry, I was just moving all the delegations to item four where they were before, okay. not instead of under three, which is confirmation of minutes. Okay, thank you. See the slide on the screen. Uh, we just see your files. As for the uh, video uh, this evening, uh, are, are you able to uh, uh, see it on that screen on that side and are you able to zoom in on it so that maybe your viewers can be able to see it? Uh, I probably won't zoom in but, I'll, but I can fully see that screen. Okay. some technical problems. CFO Ganita. Well, I don't understand what kind of files you're seeing because all I have open is the PowerPoint presentation. No files are open. We don't, and, we uh, don't. Like if a Windows viewer was visible, but that's disappeared now. Do you want to try <laughs> sharing your screen again? There you go. There, now we have it. Okay, so we're looking at the 2022 budget, also known as financial plan. Uh, the, the CAO has the schedule for budgets for the future, where uh, July start drafting, August management completes the draft, October. Uh, revisit the budgets November, December, finalize the draft, present to council. January, final budget review by council. And March to April, the public hearing. And then October, October to March is the design and tender process. And then January through December is monitoring expenses and analyzing budget deviations. Uh, 2022 budget priorities maintain and review levels of service in comparison to previous years, maintain and create additional self sustaining infrastructure, ensure available financial resources to participate in future federal, provincial, and municipal programs when available. Uh, 2022 budget, what to anticipate, the municipal property tax rate will be 22.315 and 
and that will bring in tax revenue of five million one hundred sixty-five thousand nine forty-seven. That's a two point six percent increase from the twenty twenty-one bill rate, and a four point seven percent increase in tax revenue comparing to the last pre-COVID year. It's a 0.03% change from the 2019 mill rate and 4.6% increase from 2019 tax revenue. So the mill rates are on the right side. 2019 was 22.308, 2021 was 21.749, and 2022 is planned for 22.315 in the revenues from 4.9 to 5.1 million. Uh, the 2022 budget includes 430,000 in new capital improvements, uh, including things like electric vehicle charging station, water treatment plant backup generator. Uh, we'll go through more later in the presentation. And 1.4 million in infrastructure renewal which includes 13 Avenue and 3rd Street South Base Work, 2nd Street South Base Repair, Legion Park Path Upgrade, Veterans Hall Parking Lot Pavement, and more we'll get to later. Looking at revenue, uh, what's changed from 2021 in 2021, the town got COVID relief monies to, uh, totaling 255. 240,000 from the Federal Safe Restart Program and 15,000 from the Manitoba Bridge Program. <coughs> and the Canada Community Building Fund, formerly known as the Federal Gas Tax Funding, was doubled in 2021, 450,000. And that was a one time doubling for that year. So that's 2022 is back to the regular amount of 225,000 and no COVID relief money in 2022. That was just for 2021. So the, those two things alone is a $480,000 revenue drop from 2021 to 2022. The total budgeted revenue is million four hundred four hundred and sixty seven thousand four oh four the town fee schedule what the town charges for various services uh, across the board approximately a two percent increase on general fees not including permits and applications or cost recovery fees uh, some of the grants uh, include the urban policing grant four hundred fifty one thousand and the uh, community building fund that goes into a reserve that's a requirement of the fund that it goes into a reserve until it's used so it's the revenue coming in is offset by a contribution to reserve 225,000 so for total revenue that's a 10.98 percent increase over 2019 and a 2.2 increase over 2021 and on the right hand side you can see that most of the money the town has coming in comes from taxes 5.1 million followed by user fees and grants and for 2022 transferring from surplus uh, there was a surplus in 2021 that resulted from savings from facilities being closed due to COVID as well as the $255,000 of COVID money that I mentioned. Uh, property value, the tax relationship, uh, there's property gross value of 0.8% increase from 2021. That's the increase in the assessment for the town as a whole went up 0.8%. And the uh, property values, Throughout the town, 65% are for residential properties, 34.7% for commercial properties, and 0.3% for agricultural and railway properties. The residential properties are taxed at 45% of their assessed value. Commercial properties are 
taxed at 65% of their assessed value. Okay. Uh, large part of the property tax bill is education tax, but that's completely out of control of municipalities. The municipality has no responsibility in establishing the education levy. The, the municipality is told how much the public schools finance board and the Swan Valley School Division require, and then that's uh, included in the property tax bills, but it does not go to the municipality. It goes to the public schools finance board and Swan Valley School Division. And that represents 36% uh, of all property taxes. So only 64% of the tax bill is for the municipality. And the province is currently in the process of phasing out the education tax from the property tax collection system. They already started in 2021, where the education tax was reduced by 25 percent for residential properties. All residential properties got a check from the province for 25 percent of their education taxes, and commercial properties got a check from the province for 10 percent of the education taxes. We haven't heard yet, but the reduction will be for 2022, whether it'll remain at 25% or whether it will increase. We haven't heard that yet. So, but the intention, stated intention of the province is to eliminate the education tax and property taxes entirely at some point. So just to compare the mill rates over the last five years in 2018, 18.920, in 2019, and 22.308, which is a 17.9% increase. 2020, mill rate was 21.278, which was a 4.7% decrease from 2019. COVID came upon us, and so the budget was uh, streamlined and trimmed to result in a decrease. Facilities were closed and that, so the costs were down. 2021 mill rate was 21.749, which was a slight increase from 2020 to 2.2%. And 2022 plan is for 22.315, which is a 2.6% increase from 2021. So average over the years is 4.53% increase yearly. So what will town taxes cost on a dwelling, residential dwelling that has an assessed value of 150,000, it's taxable at 45%, that's 67,500. The annual municipal property taxes will be $1,506.26, which works out to $125.52 a month. And see the comparison of other things, what they cost per month. So daily large coffee, home, West Man home, TV, monthly Winnipeg transit bus pass, cellular plan, cigarettes. So just to compare what your taxes cost to other expenses that people may have. So the summary of revenues, uh, how, how the pie is broken down, as I mentioned, taxes, the biggest slice in the pie followed by user fees. Taxes are 5.1 million, user fees 1.6 million, grants 1.0 million, and for 2022, transferring from surplus and reserves, 530,000, and other sources of revenue, 138,000. Our user fees was 18% of the source of revenues. Yeah. Most of that is from environmental health. That's scale fees at the landfill and the quarterly invoices to commercial properties 
for garbage and recycling pickup. Recreation and cultural, it's for using the various facilities, the swimming, hockey, and skating, and so forth. 222,000. Rentals and facility usage, 131,000. Protective services, 104,000. Government services, 81,000. Public health and welfare, 57,000. And transportation services, 38,000. We mentioned the other revenues uh, that includes things like tax penalties, taxes added, <coughs> miscellaneous land sales, cable TV fees and investments. Turning to the expenses side of things, the total equal to the total revenue so that we have a balanced budget, 8,467,404. That's a 10.8% of the increase over 2019 and a 10.18% increase over 2021. With the COVID dying down and hopefully going away, we can be planning to have facilities open all year again. So we're budgeting for a full year of operations. Our regional planning and development, 40,000 resource conservation and industrial development, 87,000 public health and welfare services, 193,000 general government services, 822,000 uh, transfers to reserves, 884,000 transportation services, 937,000 fiscal services, 992,000 environmental health services, 1,272,000 uh, recreation and cultural services, 147,000 and protective services, 1,768,000. So uh, as you can see, the highest uh, line, oh, sorry, recreation cultural services is some commas missing there. It's 1,470,000. So protective services is uh, the largest part of the budget followed closely by recreation and cultural services and environmental health services. Now, general government services includes a legislative, that's all the costs of council, 139,000. Administration, 490,000. Office, which is like supplies, utilities, repairs, etc. Everything to do with the office, 140,000, and then other legal audit insurance, etc. 53,000. That's a 19.12 percent increase over 2019. 10.64 percent increase over 2021. Protective services total budget, 1,768,216. That includes a fire service, 317,000 RCMP, which is the largest portion of that, 1,321,000. And then other bylaw enforcement, animal control, building inspector, workplace safety, et cetera, 130,000. It's a 12.18% increase over 2019 and a 4.64% decrease from 2021. This uh, just breaks down protective services into pie charts. Uh, police is the largest wedge, followed by fire, and then other includes uh, bylaws, safety, building inspector, animal pest control, epidemic, flood control, emergency measures. RCMP being the largest portion of protective services is 15.6% of the town's total municipal expenditures. And that's a 15% increase over 2019 and 8.7% increase over 2021 and 
as the line shows on the chart, it's ever climbing. Transportation services includes things like road maintenance, just under 100,000, road reconstruction, 60,000, traffic services, 31,000, snow and ice removal, 153,000, street lighting, 76,000, storm sewers, 22,000, total budget for transportation services, 937,000. That's a 4.9% increase over 2019 and a 12.5% increase over 2021. Environmental health services, waste collection, 391,000, landfill, 367,000, and recycling, which includes collection and processing, 514,000. Total budget for environmental health, 1,272,000. That's a 5.7% increase over 2019 and an 8.6% increase over 2021. Public health and welfare includes cemetery, 82,000, doctor recruitment, 64,000, social assistance, 43,750. Total budget for public health and welfare is 193,000, and that's a 25.7% increase over 2019, and 16.77% increase over 2021. Regional planning and development total budget is 40,600, and that includes planning and zoning, 7,700, beautification and land rehabilitation, 4,050, urban area weed, weed control, 13,150, mm -hmm. Christmas lights, decorations, flags, 9,800, communities in bloom, 5,900. Resource conservation and industrial development includes Things like the incentive plan, which you did at 40,000, tourism 11,000, water conservation 13,450, veterinary services 7,150. So the total budget for research conservation and industrial development is 87,300. And that's a 35.2% decrease from 2019 and a 14.5% decrease from 2021. The creation of cultural services includes uh, the outdoor rinks and the Centennial Arena, 442,000, Aquatic Center, 634,000, Community Hall, 125,000, and Parks and Playgrounds, 108,000. Total budget for recreation and cultural services is 1,470,000. And that's a slight decrease from the last full year pre-COVID, 1.7% and a 43% increase over 2021 because in 2021, the town budgeted for facilities being closed due to COVID. So I'm just showing the timeline over the last six years can see that in 2017, uh, skating rinks and arena, uh, actual cost was 406,000 in 2017, 435,000 in 2018, 437,000 in 2019, and then drop in 2020 due to the start of COVID, 377,000. 2021. 348,000 in 2022 for full operations, 442,000. Same kind of trend for the aquatic center in 2017, the total cost was 747,000. In 2018, 773,000. 2019, 684,000. 2020, 330. 8,000, 2021, 339,000, and then 2022, budgeting for a full year, 634,000. Community centers and halls, 
2017, 97,000, 2018, 108,000, 2019, 112, and then 2020, there were some renovations that were done, so the expenses were up 178,000, 2021 down to just under 90,000, and 2022 budgeting for 125,000. Parks and playgrounds, some kind of trend is the rink and the aquatic center. 2017 was 116,000, 2018, 117,000, 2019, 134,000, 2020 down to 85,000 to COVID. Likewise, 2021, 84,000, 2022, but budgeting for full operations, 108,000. Fiscal services uh, <coughs> includes uh, debenture debt payments, 667,000, and capital programs, 283,000. Most of that, well, in fact, all of it will be covered by transfer from surplus. Total budget, 949,756. So that's a 72% increase over 2019 and 22% increase over 2021. All right, utility services, there's 1,625 service connections in the town, 218 hydrants, no rate increase for 2022, but the rate study will be done for future years. Water expense, service expense, 548,000. Sewer service expense, 225,000. Other expenses in the utility, which includes uh, debt payments and transfers to reserve, 487,000. So the total revenue and total expenses for utility is budgeted at 1,345,000. So uh, 2022 capital projects, <clears throat> as was mentioned earlier, 1.8 million on capital improvements, including things like the water treatment plan, programmable logic controller upgrade, the Green Environmental Act proposal submission, water treatment plan, standalone backup generator, Legion Park Pass upgrade, the loader, electrical vehicle charging station. Specific items in the capital program when the fire department is a turnout gear 26,000 under transportation and environmental health. 13th Avenue, 3rd Street South Base Work is expected to cost 100,000. 2nd Street South Base Repair and Asphalt 70,000. 800 and 900 blocks, 2nd Street North Millenfield 130,000. Sidewalk replacement and Repairs 25,000, a loader 160,000, half ton 35,000, landfill shredding and road building 45,000. And these are all coming out of reserves, except the turnout gears coming from surplus, but everything under transportation and environmental health is coming from reserves, either the Canada Community Building Fund for the roads sidewalks or the replacement <coughs> reserve for the machinery. Under utility, water plant backup generator station is expected to cost 350000 We're expecting half of that to be funded by the Manitoba Water Services Board, so the other half, 175000 will come from the utility reserve. Same thing as the water treatment plant. PLC upgrade, expecting uh, Manitoba Water Services board funding for half of that and the other half from utility reserve. And likewise, as those with the Environmental Act proposal submission, expecting funding for half of that, uh, grant for half of that, the yeah, other 60,000 from reserve. Recreation tractor cab with a uh, mower and blade. 50,000, Legion Park Path, 85,000, 
and, and a couple other things repeating the whole parking lot, 25,000 electrical vehicle charging station, 80,000. Those are all coming from the surplus. Uh, 2022 budget includes no new debt obligations. So all the debt obligations that we have are from past years of projects. And the, the debtor payments are all listed there. 12th and 3rd F South Paving Curve and Gutter, 5,800. Incident Command Vehicle, 9,900. Fire Trading Equipment, 16,997. Voter Backhoe, 20,716. Sixth Avenue lift station upgrade 29,592. Hayes station upgrade 32,000. Ross lift station upgrade 65,000. Marina temporary ice floor 9,000. Wellness center building repair 67,000. Well control building 67,000. Main street water and sewer renewal 71,000. Administration office 113,000. And wellness center construction 360,000. And you can see the the terms there, most of them, uh, and uh, somewhere around 2032, 2033, 2035. That's the end of the presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Gnita. Uh, is there any further discussion or questions that? Uh, Council wants to discuss or ask. We've gone through this obviously for the last few months, so pretty much know the the, the whole thing with the with the budget. Um, Councilor Gloria. Uh, just a comment to Mr. Ganita and the rest of uh, administration staff that worked on the budget <coughs> with him. Um, job well done, and thank you very much. I know it's a lot of work goes into this. It's uh, one of the bigger things that uh, that council come gets to see every year, and uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Good luck. I have a few uh, questions and observations here from my brief skimming of this. Um, under, there's a, there seems to be a new line item town promotion under uh, seventy two hundred. Fifty-two seventy-three. Um, that's for twenty-five hundred dollars. What did, what uh, expenses does that include? What line were you in again? Seventy town, what? Town promotion for twenty-five hundred dollars. It appears to be a new line item. Page. Uh, five. Five. I can hardly hear you. Page five. I'll try to speak up. Oh, the 2500 there? That was for? Cups, pins, that type of stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, that's like the, the, the town uh, typically will purchase uh, promotional <coughs> material, like if it's like cups or pins and, and so forth to give away. That generally was taken out of a different line. We just created that to be a little bit more uh, open. Okay. Oh, Mr. Gadita, go ahead. Uh, I believe that's the, the Thompson trade show, which was uh, canceled the last couple of years because of COVID. And so the budgeting of it, it will happen again this we, year now that restrictions have eased. But Mr. Uh, Poole had said that he was also going to be purchasing uh, promotional material for the town. Will it not come out of that? Some of it can, yeah. Lost them. What's that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. In the in the past, we've given twenty five hundred for the Thompson trade show. Uh, I'm not sure what the plan is for this year. That the the budget that's on the same line as the Thompson trade show is twenty five hundred. I'm not sure what was all envisioned to be included in that this year. Okay. What was your next question? Um, I apologize if Mr. Ganita actually mentioned it, but I, the hall parking lot repaving, is that is that this building or is that the Veterans Hall? Veterans Hall. Okay. Uh, pool construction issues lawsuit, how, how come that falls under capital expenditures? Uh, I'll let Mr. Ganita answer that. It, it's in connection with the construction issues and 
so it was budgeted under the capital because it relates to issues with the construction of the wellness center, which was a capital project. Okay. Um, the, the EV charging station was mentioned in the presentation, but it's not appearing in the paper copy. Was that just something that didn't make it to the paper copy? I believe it's in there because it's, it is a community-driven project, so it's kind of like an in and out, but it, I believe it is in there because I, it may be added in one line, Mr. Ganita. Uh, the expectation is that, that it will not cost the town any money. The, it'll be fully funded by uh, grants and, and donations from government organizations and from community organizations. And so uh, it, it's not on the official financial plan template because it, it's uh, the expectation is that the grant money will completely offset the cost, but it is a project that the town is doing, just it won't cost the taxpayers anything. Okay. Um, and I know you, you're, you're making a new reserve for crime prevention, I see, uh, later on today. Is there going to be a transfer to that reserve at all this year in this budget? Uh, yes. Yeah. And then I see there that uh, in the next year's capital expenditures, there is uh, Centennial Arena renovation for $4.6 million. Um, what is the timeline for when more details of that plan will come out? We're really working on that. Like the, I would have to say that probably through this year, there would be some discussion about that because there would have to be some public notification or public hearing on that. Uh, but that will be kind of ongoing too this year if we we're even remotely thinking about getting the project started in 2023. That's all I have. All right, good questions. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. So uh, thank you, Mr. McGee. It was very uh, in depth. Uh, just to put it in layman terms for myself, is so what can I expect my taxes to go up? What percentages? With all the service fees and all the mill rates going up, what would I expect for my taxes to go up, percentage wise? Four percent. That was in the uh, presentation. It was round four. Four percent. Yeah. That was really everything included in that budget. Okay. Yeah, and, and that might differ from from different property to property. Average is going to be about four percent, but uh, some may have uh, their their uh, assessment may have changed a, a little bit more, such as mine as an example, where I'll see much more than a four percent increase. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Go ahead, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ganita. If you can just help me find. Um, in the revenue section, what are we, what is the town collecting for um, uh, business tax revenue? Thank you very much. Okay, anything further? Being none, uh, I guess last comment from me is, is again thanking uh, CFO Ganita for the work and all of our administration and, and, uh, and management and staff uh, for working with us on this budget. Obviously, it's, it's a long process, and uh, we do appreciate your diligence and, and your hard work towards this. Um, it's not always easy to uh, come out with the final numbers, but uh, 
I think we've done a, a good job in, uh, in, in this presentation. Um, also, with that, because we don't have anybody here tonight, and that's somewhat of a, a disappointment because we'd always like to see uh, people come and ask questions, but they have the opportunity to see this, and I'm hoping that maybe we'll have this presentation maybe on one of our social media uh, pages or our town pages that uh, individuals can see the slide presentation. Obviously, they have the opportunity to pick up a copy of the financial plan uh, at our office here. Uh, but maybe it could also be posted on the, the draft copy anyways, be dra uh, uh, sorry, um, put on our website. website. Um, and then of course, like always, anybody has the opportunity to ask any members of council questions about the budget uh, and as well as uh, our administration. So again, I thank you to everybody, including all the members of council through that process. So with that, I will now uh, adjourn the hearing. 3.4, I close the public hearing for the 2022 financial plan at 7.51 p.m. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor, it's carried. <clears throat> All right, so then moving on to our regular meeting, uh, 5.1. Resulted the email from the Assistant Deputy Minister, Crime Prevention Branch, dated April the 4th, 2022, concerning National Police Federation Collective Agreement, frequently asked questions be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbitt, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 5.2. Resolved that the email from Candy Keeler of Operation Smile dated April the 5th, 2022, concerning pro proclaiming June the 19th, 2022, as the longest day of smiles be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. So are we going to make that proclamation in June? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Prior to the date. Uh, and for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Five point three. Resulted the letter from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, dated April fourteenth, two thousand twenty-two, regarding RCMP regular member in-year pay raise amount for the 2021-22 quarter four MPSA invoice be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. So am I reading this wrong or is that, do we add these numbers together or what, what's the final cost? Mr. Ganita. Oh, maybe it is here. I think that that is our share. Uh, this this letter is basically just saying how do we want to pay the retroactive? Do we want to pay it all at once or keep going quarterly? And so I, I don't see any reason to pay it ahead of time, so we just left it at quarterly. Okay. So total cost? Just let me find the email. I, I just emailed the mayor that the other day. Yeah, I was going to say that I have that in email. Thirty-one thousand times four. Forty thousand times four. The thirty-one thousand times four is is no, just the increase for for this current year. Um, the retro pay is three hundred and forty thousand. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything further? All in favor? It's carried. Five point four. 
result, the town of Swan River provide a letter of support to the Swan Valley Crisis Center for their Women's Resource Center and Combined Shelter Transitional Housing. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. I, I have no problem uh, sending a letter of support for this, but they asked a few more questions than that as far as uh, lots available that they would fit within the zoning. Um, so would, would our letter also address their other questions? You, you've been having some conversations with them already? That's correct, yeah. I uh, spoke with her and met with uh, her development officer and uh, what they're describing would be uh, conditional use. And uh, so he passed on to her that the lots that are owned by the town, they could apply for the conditional use prior to purchasing it. And then if the conditional use is approved, then they can purchase the lot so that they don't purchase the lot that they can't use. So did we provide them with the list of lots that we have available already? Uh, she already had the list. Okay. Uh, she contacted me uh, in respect to a few of them. And uh, so when I met with the development officer under both of the zones, because there was two different zones that they were looking at, um, this type of building that they're discussing is conditional in both of them. So either location, it would be conditional. Okay. And then as far as the incentives, are they eligible? Is something like this eligible for the incentive program? I imagine they're probably I'll tax exempt. I'll that with the CAO, but I believe okay. they would be as build but uh, that I'll have to uh, discuss with the CAO. Further discussion? Councillor White. And just I, I know they, they would like some letter of confirmation within the next week or so. That's right yeah the letter of support so that they can apply yeah. for funding. Thank you. All in favor? Five point five resolved that the letter from the Minister of Environment, Climate and Parks and the Minister of Natural Resources emailed April the twentieth, two thousand twenty two be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Five point six. Result of the building permits 922 and 1022 with a total estimated value of $5,250 be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Six. Six point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Quiet bunch tonight. 6.2. Result of the March 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor uh, Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, just in addition to the report, uh, Chief Rorchuk uh, has informed me today that uh, our big handy van was uh, brought to formals for re-safety and I guess it just needs some ball joints and some minor repairs and it'll be back on the road or be able to be back on the road. So I don't know what transpired before, but it appears that it can be safety. Can discuss it in camera. Yeah, I was gonna say that it can be discussed in camera. Yeah. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Carried. All right, 6.3 council and CO reports. I'll start tonight with Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Mayor Jacobson. Oh, uh, I can't run 
remember the date, but attended a meeting with MI regarding the intersection of 10 Main Street and 10. Uh, discussion went on about what was proposed right now. Uh, some of the things were brought forward. I brought forward there's a drainage issue when you heading north and turning east onto 10. There's always been a drainage issue of use Manitoba Hydro. One of the other issues that have always been a part of that intersection is when you're coming from the north on 10 and you meet the intersection, the boulevards there are really tight. There's only two lanes there. Uh, M and I said they'd take some of this into consideration. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Harvey, but by the sounds of it, this design is ready to go this year. That's correct. Okay. Other than that, that's what all was basically spoke on to MI at that time. Unless you have anything to add to it. Uh, yeah, we informed them that we're having that meeting with the minister and, uh, and that we're going to propose uh, just turning lights without uh, the concrete meridian or the median. Um, they understood that, but they had to move forward with this portion so that they were ready depending on how that meeting with the minister goes. So we have that scheduled for Thursday. and. Uh, once we discuss with the minister, see how that one goes, and then I'll be getting in touch with the engineers that we met with either way and let them know the, kind of the status on our end after that uh, meeting with the minister. But, uh, I've been in touch with them kind of throughout the winter. And, uh, yeah, it'll really hinge on that meeting as to what uh, goes forward. Okay. <clears throat> You're still on. Okay. Uh Attended the MM conference. Uh, I was at the announcement of Premier Stephenson made an announcement here. I'll let Councillor Dory can get in more into depth on the announcement that she made. Uh, interesting. Uh, also, the fireside chat with Minister Clark, Municipal Relations, and uh, Reed Kim Blight. Uh, I found the minister spoke very well, spoke very clearly of municipal problems and issues that are in the future. Um, also was that uh, attended the fostering of municipal and indigenous partnerships. I think the Thomas Wanderers should be very proud of their accomplishments, what they've done over the years with the indigenous people. Should be very proud of Councilor Glory, how he represented us on the stage there. I was impressed with uh, uh, Chief Janai on his explanation of Sapatwayak's side of the story, I would say. Uh, he was very well informed, spoke very well, and I do believe it came from his heart. I also was at uh, demystifying of municipal boards. The planning amendment bill 38 was nine years behind. So they've caught up, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're back to about a year and a half now. They had over 4,000 applicants to look at. They've kind of streamlined it a bit, so things are getting a little bit better with the planning amendment part. Uh, bill 22 was discussed at the Manitoba Cosmetic pesticide legislation. Uh, supposedly that will be voted on sometime in June. By the looks of it, you will be able to spray your lawns, you'll be able to spray some other things, but there could be some negative issues in the future of that. Uh, just a few other things uh, happened to be at the landfill site again today. Just noticing that the land adjoining to the south of the landfill, the, the farmer that's there, with these high winds, it is polluted with bags. I have no idea what we should do there, but just to let you know that there needs to be something done because I have no idea how, if they'll take that or how long that'll go without being brought to our attention. So it, something needs to be done there. So if you can. Yeah, yeah I don't we get our summer students, we usually don't do something. Okay. Like that for okay. Uh, glad to see the wellness centers up and running again. That was actually pretty quick work on their behalf. Somebody uh, built for it. got somebody that locally that did the job and did it very well. Uh, one of the other things when I was at the trade show, and I, this will be just a suggestion for next year, that maybe should look we should look as a council as sending 
uh, foreman and maybe some of the mechanics to these trade shows and meet some of the people that we deal with all the time. It would be very enlightening for them to meet these. They deal with them on the phone all the time. Uh, give them, a, I don't know, this is just again my suggestion, give them one day ticket to the trade show. They'll see the equipment then they meet these people hands on, which is really actually very good for them. Uh, apartment building across from Ace Hardware. I was asked again, what's happening there? Are we moving ahead with anything with that? Is it budgeted in this year for the demolition of that? Or where do we go with that? Uh, Chief Fedorchuk, would you be able to discuss that? Well, as far as I know, it's still in the hands of the CAO. Okay, I'll have to check with the CAO. Okay, so too. next meeting or something. Thank you. Uh, we could a little later, uh, we're going into it in camera, okay, uh, just some employee matters to discuss. Just a friendly reminder that there was a challenge set out for $100 for COPP. Now, I hate to keep bringing it up, and I'm not looking at you just directly, constantly. you seem to be staring at me, and so I'll just <laughs> bring that to your attention again, and you know, I mean, you thought you had $100 and you spent it at AMM, and and once you get a fresh one, we'll uh, bring it to the forefront. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Bobbitt. <laughs> Councillor uh, White, you prepared for that? <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that, but it's, it's a wonderful cause. I will look tonight out. Uh, April 6th, we had the, uh, the fire chiefs meeting. We're talking with the G4. It was nice to see all the fire departments and the government guys together and try to plan to work together, which is always a reasonable goal. I want to thank uh, Chief Fedorchuk for making that happen. On April the 8th, I had my last PMH meeting. Uh, originally, you were appointed to the PMH board for three years. In fact, they extended mine to six years, and it was wonderful. And, but the good news is, uh, uh, Councillor Morio has been uh, appointed to replace, uh, be a, not replace me, I don't think it's a fair word, to represent uh, this end of, of Manitoba on the PMH board. So I look forward to giving you all the questions you gave me all the time, sir. <laughs> and you'll do a wonderful job. On April the 12th, we had the bridge meeting, and we had the uh, Deputy Minister of, of Health there. We had the Minister, we had four or five deputies and Chief of Staffs and whatever. So, and the bottom line is we're trying to make the, as you've heard before, but this is the first formal meeting, and we've asked the President of uh, Red River Community College to meet with the President of the Red River, meet with the President of University College of the North, formulate a plan, take that plan to shared health, and take that plan from shared health to advanced education or at the same time, and then come back with, with the final report to share with the committee. There was at least a dozen or 15 of us on the Zoom meeting. Things very productive, and I remain uh, optimistic that someday we'll, we'll be able to train our ambassador nurse people right here when they graduate from the LPN. They can come BNs without having to leave the town, and the hope is that obviously if they're local people, they train local, they'll stay local. So. We, uh, I remain optimistic, optimistic on that. Then like the rest of us, I went to the AMM. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate the time with Colleen Clark, Minister Clark, and, uh, and her thoughts about uh, health care and being very frank and very candid. She's not the Minister of Health, but she's a cabinet minister, and she meets regularly with the Minister of Health. And we also talked very briefly to Doyle Pinuk, who will be coming up this Thursday, Friday, Thursday, to, Thursday to talk with us about the highway. So, Making those connections, making those networks face to face, sitting over a cup of tea or whatever is important. We, talked to, we went to an outreach on Council to Quorum. I think we really do a good job. I think we follow Robert's rules of orders. We're, other than picking on me, we're pretty polite most of the time. And then fostering uh, municipal relationships, and I really want to give a bouquet out to uh, Councillor Delorier. He and uh, Chief Jedi and two others talked about the advantages of the uh, TLEs in our communities, not just from an economic perspective, but from a cultural perspective and two societies, two governments working together. And uh, I came away with a good feeling and, and lots of questions came up to Councillor Morio, Councillor Delorier rather, and Chief Chennai. He has a, a very humorous side, well both men do. Then we went through advanced accessibility and talked about grants and support for age-friendly things. One in four people have disabilities. And uh, so that's 25% 20, of our population that might need some help relative to ramps, relative to lighting, whatever it might be. 
Then COVID con conversations, the strategies to how not, how not get in a fight, they didn't say that. Hey, people will drink differently, but our COVID perspectives, of course they will. But it's really important to respect that do think differently and try to find a mutual way to solve those issues without uh, going to war. Uh, abuse policies and protocols for uh, groups like ourselves. Uh, we need a forum. We need a resolution that what we can do and where can we can go with uh, abuse issues because they seem to be whatever recognized and noted more often. I can't believe for a second that there are more of them. I think we need more time being less sensitive than, and not reacting as being uh, overly reactive. Engaging, retaining employees, and they, they talked, that was another symposium, how to look after your leader, and the uh, CEO Poole isn't here right now, but in his absence I can say he's a wonderful leader, as is the rest of his team, and we have to recognize that leadership, that will build those abilities and reward them, and regardless where you are in the peck order, I think recognizing positively those individuals. Then we went to one with the Manitoba Budsman, and the process to follow if you have concerns, if they're not concerned, and where to go with them. So. Pretty busy time, absolutely. On the 21st, I had a nurse meeting. One of the senior nurses was here, and the PMH board member, Morio, and I met with them. And the, the issue of agency nurses came up. With it. It's costing millions of money for, for our government to bring these people in from all over. It's, it's a slippery slope. They, they cost us more money. They're probably wonderful nurses. I'm sure they are wonderful nurses, but it's very expensive. So if we could train more locally, we wouldn't have that issue, I suspect. And then uh, we have a letter recently from the Health Minister Gordon's office, and she wants to meet with uh, the uh, medical service team and anybody else in council, of course, is invited to talk about the CT scan. So that's the first formal reach out that we have in a written form from the Minister of Health. So we're going to get together soon and make a plan as council, and I've reached out back to them and said, what questions do you want answered? And I, I am really getting more and more opti optimistic about that CT scan. That's the first formal letter we've got from them. With the paid commercials, uh, the 29th, which is very soon, the Hero Club is having a fundraiser, 11 to 2 p.m. at Extra Foods. The money goes to a wonderful cause. So I think that's Saturday, the 29th. Who cares? 29th at Extra Foods. And the 30th, uh, what a compliment to the Bozeman Lions Club. They're having a the Ukrainian fundraising dinner from 4 to 7. You can buy tickets at Work World, Quick Stop, and uh, I suspect our, uh, soon we're having a G4. And one of the agendas on the G4 is how to reach out to help our Ukrainian friends. Swan Valley Sport Fish Dinner, May the 7th, and uh, that's about it for now. Thank you, sir. Yep. Cook and Cook. What about them? Tickets. Tickets are at Cook and Cook for? For the Ukrainian Supper. For the Ukrainian Supper and Work World and Quick Stop. And they have to be an advance, thank you. They have to be an advance ticket because they're hoping to have 600 people too. It's the week before our fish dinner and I'd, I'm okay. I'm really okay with that because the Ukrainian community needs that money a lot more than the fish do. But we'll sell our fish tickets, don't you worry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Delorier. Hey, um, as was mentioned, I attended the, uh, the fire fire meeting, I guess you could call it on, on April 6th, and I think it was really good for all of us that attended and, and all of our, our municipal neighbors that attended because they, they really outlined what things like mutual aid is and what it is not and what, what a purchase service is and what it is not, and, and so I think that was good for all of us to hear. I know uh, about a year back, uh, Chief Vodorchuk had provided us with some documents that outlined that, but I think it was good for the... For the, for the uh, broader uh, valley to valley leadership to hear hear what uh, what those things were and it kind of spurs me on that I think maybe we need to look at our mutual aid agreement and make sure that some of those things are maybe more well defined within the agreement itself um, so I don't know what that process looks like but I think that's something maybe we need to look at um, is our mutual aid agreement the the agreement that forms the district and and you know maybe outline some definitions in there of, of what what a response is what what mutual aid is because I think it's uh, I think it will pay dividends in the future um, attended the AMM uh, in, in Brandon uh, attended the seminar on bill 37 which was I think it was kind of uh, to soften the blow because I think there there is a lot of uh, 
A lot of unhappy municipalities regarding Bill 37. It took away a lot of power that municipalities have to stop or, 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 uh, or uh, delay or, or put conditions on development. And now it basically falls in the hands of the municipal board. Um, it really, we can say no, but we can be overturned quite easily now. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure I'm any bigger of a fan of Bill 37. And I know the province's uh, position on it is that it will allow development to happen in Manitoba quicker. But um, I think that's all well and good until some sort of development is in your backyard that, as a community, you don't want. Um, uh, as Councillor Bob uh, mentioned, there was an announcement from Premier Stephenson regarding the doubling of the funding for the grant that we were going to apply for the, uh, the, Legion. the Legion Park Pathway. And I think we got denied in the initial intake. Well, now that the, the pot of money that, that, uh, that that's coming out of has been doubled it was uh, uh, and I think there was you know uh, it could have been probably doubled again to, to fulfill every application they said so that, I don't think it's a slam dunk that we'll get it the second time but I think we should definitely look into it um, uh, yeah. also as mentioned I had an opportunity to present on our on our urban reserves here in town our TLE uh, uh, how the negotiation went and how our relationship has gone and I, I also must say uh, once Chief Janai is done uh, being a chief he'll definitely have a have a have a role in or he'll have an opportunity in comedy he's got perfect time and he's such a good speaker um, I also took a seminar on in general immigration but in sp specifically immigration from Ukraine um, from, from a provincial standpoint, I mean, uh, immigration is a federal responsibility, but there basically is kind of a provincial backdoor through the provincial nominee program, um, which uh, the province is, is using that backdoor to, to uh, bring in Ukrainians uh, who are affected by the, by the war, um, the refugees, I guess with a small R, you're not allowed to call them refugees with a big R, for, for a myriad of, uh, of international political reasons. Uh, once they're an actual refugee, they fall under uh, uh, some UN conventions where the first country they get to that welcomes them is where they have to go. So not calling them refugees allows them to basically hop countries and eventually get to Canada. Um, as far as, uh, you know, it was interesting, the, the gentleman, it was the Assistant Deputy Minister of, of Immigration for Manitoba who put it on. It was interesting that says that there's a lot approved already to immigrate to Canada, but they're just kind of in a holding pattern in Warsaw. Most of them are in Warsaw, Poland, and they're they're sitting there waiting because their their loved ones, their husbands, their fathers can't leave the country yet, so they don't necessarily want to go too far. And not only that, you know, their home, their lives, the everything they've built up to this point is in Ukraine. If the war ends, you know, they may have a home to go back to or they may not. So they're kind of a lot of them they say have all it, all it would take is to get on a plane and come to Canada. All their, all their paperwork is done, but they're just kind of in a holding pattern, waiting for, for those two reasons to, you know, they don't necessarily want, they weren't looking at immigrating out of Ukraine before this, so their, their home is Ukraine, and plus their, their loved ones aren't able to leave, so they don't necessarily want to leave, be too far. And, you know, it, it kind of, things you don't really think about, you think, well, if there's a war going on, don't come to Canada, especially... So it was, it was really interesting, uh, really interesting uh, seminar anyways. Um, other than that, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Deputy Mayor Tony. Thank you, <clears throat> Your Worship. Um, I've got a couple notes for this. First of all, um, I attended the April 6th fire services meeting along with most councillors um, and it Definitely gave uh, myself and I'm assuming everybody else in the room a, a, a whole new perspective on, uh, as Councillor Delorier indicated, on mutual aid and uh, um, fire protection. So, again, I think that uh, as Councillor Delorier mentioned, we need to review our agreements, um, and I think that we are probably not going to get away from service agreements. So we need to continue to to uh, um, work with our neighbors and develop and, and develop those agreements for the betterment of the community. I had the opportunity to travel to Dauphin on Monday and I just want to extend uh, um, heartfelt uh, 
um, a heartfelt uh, comment, I guess, to that community after the storm that they did have. I did travel through. I did see hydro poles snapped like uh, matchsticks and uh, hydro lines that you couldn't put your hand around because they were solid ice. Um, and as well, once those hydro lines did fall, they did freeze to the ground. It was a whole myriad of uh, conditions to get power up and running to that uh, that community. So my sympathy out to that community who did lose power and my grateful, heartfelt thanks to Manitoba Hydro to continue and work extremely hard throughout the conditions there um, in the city of Dauphin. Um, I just want to talk quickly about a mental health uh, first aid workshop that I'm currently attending and I do uh, think that that would be a good opportunity for um, whether this whether for council or for um, team leaders in our organization um, it's a great training program um, offers some really good insights onto um, the mental health of our employees our team members our friends um, the people that we work with every day so uh, something that was offered by CMHA um, and a great great presenter and great speaker today so if there's ever an opportunity I suggest that we uh, partake in that uh, thank you for all all of those counselors who did attend AMM unfortunately I was unavailable for that um, those meetings um, in Brandon so thank you for all of you for representing the town of Swan River just want to uh, have a quick shout out to Chief Fedorchuk, he did host uh, the Swan Valley Co-op Joint Health and Safety Team meeting at the fire hall, gave a little tour, showed the equipment, talked about uh, the health and safety of the fire department and uh, the efforts of the town of Swan River. So thank you, Chief Fedorchuk, for an amazing presentation and the uh, wealth of knowledge that my our team uh, received. Um, Quickly about the COPP program, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship, on your contribution um, um, to the challenge that Councillor Bobick did hold. So thank you to 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 you and your family, um, as well. And for those of you who didn't know or didn't hear last time, um, His Worship, um, His Worship's family contributed. Uh, um, along with his contribution so thank you very much for that the copp team uh, really appreciates that again i just want to state that there are 22 members we have about uh, another 10 now waiting for training the second week of training is coming up uh, hopefully for the second week in may we are dealing with some trainers having some flooding issues down in the south so we may have to push that back depending on schedules and things like that but we do have enough for our next training session as always if there is anyone interested in the copp program please reach out uh, we'd be happy to join have you join our team um, uh, in regards to the business consortium and the task force have been extremely busy uh, addressing those issues and uh, alignment within the community as well as the business association. Um, we do have a minister's meeting scheduled for Friday um, for the uh, assistant deputy minister um, of justice to talk about um, crime and what we are or what the community is working on and the holistic approach and the alignment of all of the organizations within the community so that is uh, something that is coming up we are looking forward to those conversations um, i think that is everything on my list thank you your worship okay perfect thank you just a query a query question okay uh, thank you for the report has COPP, they may be doing it, I'm not aware of it. Have they thought about walking around in the daytime? Absolutely. So you will see um, that was, we did have our team meeting last week. There were conversations about that. Um, now that the weather is warmer, um, we will see some of our team out on the streets walking. Again, we have uh, a vast array and a vast schedule, I guess, of individuals. Um, those individuals, some of those individuals um, 
who are younger, I guess you could say, are working during the day, who can only uh, patrol at night. However, there are some of our um, older demographic retired team members that will start patrolling um, in terms of walking the streets um, and cycling. So there are Perfect. two avenues going to be coming up with the COP program. You. So please look uh, for those brightly colored yellow, orange, yellow, yellow vests. I get yellow and orange That'd sometimes. It's a great idea. Backwards. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Councilor Moria. Um, I guess on April 6th, I also dialed into the, uh, the fire meeting that was held here um, by the mutual aid district uh, regarding the, uh, the mutual aid and service agreement presentation. But we also had a presenter there, um, uh, Mr. Yoakum, a retired fire chief from, I believe, uh, the Wallace Fire District that gave us a presentation on how their fire district uh, amalgamated a number of fire departments to become one fire department in a district and how they did it and, and something that is on the radar for potentially here in the valley if uh, we can continue on with the conversation moving forward. So, uh, last week I did a 10 AMM also with uh, the rest of the team. Um, it was great to actually participate face-to-face uh, -face, um, for the last over the number of years to meet with uh, other municipalities and councillors to network um, and discuss their issues. Um, and when you actually converse with a number of individuals and municipalities, uh, you find out that usually you're not an island out by yourself. A lot of municipalities have the exact same issues uh, that we are, so sometimes it's, it's good to uh, have those discussions and collaborate so that you're not all reinventing the wheel at the same time when you can put your heads together. Um, along with the, the various plenary sessions and uh, some of the presentations I attended to were like uh, municipal liability issues, HR topics, um, age friendly um, presentations along with uh, having some unofficial uh, side conversations with ministers and as Councillor Bobick did mention uh, one of the uh, presentations that we did attend, it was Bill 22, the Cosmetic uh, Pesticide Act that was anticipated to hit on uh, the le legislature for June approval, um, was just announced, I believe, day before yesterday, that the NDP is now using, uh, going to delay that to the fall as one of their acts that they are allowed to carry over. So we'll be going through another summer of no herbicide use if that's truly what they intend to do, but uh, that's what they announced uh, the other day. Um, some of the other discussions that continue to work on is the RCMP contracts, along with uh, some other municipalities that have those. We have upcoming uh, meeting uh, with AMM hosting our, I guess, mutual uh, grand meeting with Public Service Canada to talk about the RCMP costs and the retroactive salary <coughs> costs that are being downloaded to the municipalities along with the body-worn cameras uh, without our input. So that's going to be uh, coordinated through AMM to have uh, one big meeting where um, all contract municipalities uh, will be meeting at once so that they can't pick us off one at a time. So along with um, our own meetings with them. So, um, But with that, there is uh, some quite dissension and frustration among the larger communities that have service uh, contracts with RCMP in the province uh, regarding the spiraling out of control costs of just uh, basically salaries and, and whatnot uh, without the additional funding from either the province or the federal government on it, um, which is one of the easily single biggest increases not in our only budget, but everybody's budget, um, <clears throat> that you have no control on and have nothing to, to really fall back on. So uh, we need to really look and converse with our partners and look at what our CMP or policing in this community is gonna look like in the future. Um, if it remains the RCMP model or some other model, um, I know there's other uh, discussions that's going on there, but we need to actually do a real good depth uh, research and weigh the pros and cons and see what we can get for the best bang of our dollars. So, um, 
with the CT scan, I've been working in the background with that, uh, answering some technical questions and some other stuff in the background. So hopefully, as uh, Councillor White alludes to, that uh, hopefully that seems to be on the right track um, going forward. So but, uh, we'll see. Uh, we've been told that a number of times before and nothing's happened. So maybe the fifth minister down the line, um, we got some traction. So we'll see. Um, and then finally, as people may have noticed, that uh, there's a um, the province has issued uh, a contract with an air provider that is providing stable air patient transport for Southern Manitoba, similar to the Southern Air Ambulance Program. Uh, so that noisy plane you hear coming in is Perimeter's Metro plane, uh, which is ferrying uh, stable patients to their appointments to and from Winnipeg, uh, which is allowing uh, shared health to keep their ambulances more local than spending Great. hours and many trips going to Winnipeg on basic uh, appointments. So um, it's it's very similar program to what was initially when the province had it with the uh, the Twin Otter, but uh, now that the province doesn't have those aircraft and doesn't have that department in their um, little toolbox, um, I'm told that uh, a contract has been let out and perimeter has been successful in uh, obtaining that for uh, s transporting patients in southern Manitoba, which is causing challenges in northern Manitoba because the workload has increased, but uh, no additional resources to the whole pie. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there's some works um, on that. So, but uh, it's all I got at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Friesen. Um, yesterday I had a meeting with Communities at Care and we had a presentation from uh, the high school psychologist, uh, which is Ashley Sigurdsson. And they're introducing something called Sources of Strength program. Um, <coughs> strength based upstream suicide prevention program. Even though this program is referred to as an upstream suicide prevention program, we don't actually spend a lot of time talking about suicide because it's so strength-based. Sources isn't just a prevention program, but it's a wellness model for everyone. We talk about eight specific strengths or protective factors that help us all navigate life's up and downs, and this is going to be in the schools. These are the eight factors. Family support, positive friends, mentors, healthy activities, generosity, spirituality, physical health, and mental health. I uh, told them I would uh, bring this forward here. And if anyone is interested in becoming an adult advisor, please contact the sources team at the Swan Valley School Division office, 734-4531. Adult advisors would need to spend one full workday in training. Training will likely take place in October. Location to be determined in Swan River. <clears throat> Any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And that came from uh, Patty Hack. So if anybody's interested in being a mentor to some kids, I, uh, some I believe the council, sorry? I might need some advising. <laughs> Well, go and take the course and then you'll be fine. Yeah. The uh, younger students will be mentored by probably their counselors, but they want to include everyone, not just the teacher. They want the custodians, the cleaning people, the people in the office, and um, they're hoping that this is uh, something that will shed some light. Um, that was all from Communities of Care. And then we're having a Communities of Bloom meeting, and I guess it sounds like we're going to get some more hanging pots and get some flowers put out on the highway. And had a museum meeting, and this year they're going to go back to the opening. We haven't done that for a couple of years. And they're going to have an opening day uh, with a supper and some entertainment. and. That will be May the 29th. I think it's a Sunday. So keep that day open if you feel like going to the museum. And Councillor White, I'm surprised you didn't congratulate Kevin Carter. Well, you can. 
Congratulations, Kevin Carter. He was a facilitator for us here, and I've known Kevin since he was a little boy. Anyway, he um, received a basketball because coach of something. He got a 25-year award for 25 years of coaching. excellence in coaching. As important in his conduct and his caring for young people as his skill. So, uh, absolutely, thank you for that. Kevin is a, most importantly a wonderful young man. Yes, he is. And last but not least, uh, thank you, Darren, for this morning. Enough said there. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. And uh, I'll start off by saying uh, congratulations to Coach uh, Carter. He's a good friend of mine and, uh, and definitely very much deserving of that award. As Councillor White said, that his demeanor uh, on, on the court side and, 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 and teaching young people and and, uh, and um, what's the right word? Uh, you know, just having them, mentoring them. You know, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great, great person for our community. Uh, I obviously was away on, on some family vacation, but during that time period, I have to say that um, I, I'm very uh, happy to, uh, to see how everybody uh, represented our community in Brandon and uh, what came out of that. And Councillor Delorier took on the role of uh, doing the plenary with the uh, TLE uh, and I heard nothing but good things and not only uh, from our own team but also even from uh, some of our ministers that we have in, in government. So I do thank you for, for doing that and representing our community and, uh, and what we feel is uh, the need and for bridging reconciliation. Um, also to the rest of the team that were able to attend, your reports, you know, that you bring back you say a lot and the community should be very proud of you guys because uh, you don't, you go there and you, you learn, you listen and you bring back some really helpful things, not only for yourself as uh, making yourself a better person, but also helping our administration and the rest of the team. So I do thank you all for for what you do for for your community. Uh, with that, um, I did have a chance yesterday. Like I said, I was away, so I did. Uh, well, I, and I did follow your emails and see what how everybody was doing. And I do thank uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni for taking on uh, the role also during my uh, my absence to town as well. Um, but. Um, What's that? Meetings with a lot. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> I seem to hear that all the time. Uh, <clears throat> maybe it's because your reports are a little bit slower or less. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yesterday I had a chance to uh, have a meeting with uh, Derek Armstrong of the consortium group, and we talked about the alignment that uh, uh, Deborah Bader with Tony was talking about and this uh, new, you know, holistic uh, approach. And uh, I've been invited to attend their. Uh, task force meetings as well as uh, shadowing a little bit on the, the COPP so I'm looking forward to that and then in the evening uh, the business group uh, had their second meeting and uh, more or less kind of a repeat of, of what they had in their first because there was not everybody could attend the first meeting but uh, they did have a presentation from the consortium group as well just to brief them on uh, all the details of, of, the, of the what is uh, the consortium group and as well as uh, a really good presentation on the camera thing and I think that's really what the the business group is focusing on right now is, is the camera uh, the, the camera thing to uh, to get some kind of a platform developed so there's uh, some good ideas that are brought forth by Mr. Gade uh, they did have another organization out of Winnipeg that did a presentation BIL I'm sure that we all heard of them before uh, especially probably at the AMM, uh, but um, they're, they're meeting again in May, uh, and I think it'll be the focal point will be on the, uh, uh, the, the platform as far as the cameras and all that, and at and, and some point in time, I'm sure that we'll have to be involved with that, and however it works. <coughs> so anyway, that was uh, pretty much my day uh, back to work. Uh, yesterday. So, again, I thank you all for everything that you've done while I was gone away. 
and there was no fires, so everything was all good. And, and uh, thanks. Um, Mr. Harvey, do you have anything that you want to report at all? Uh, so I would have my uh, director of public works report, so I'll just pull that up. Uh, CAO Poole, uh, he was at the AMM conference, and then uh, he's at uh, MWWA conference uh, this week. So at the next meeting he'll be back, and uh, I'm sure he'll uh, fill you in on that. And then, uh, yeah, so I've been uh, I was down doing loader demonstrations with our mechanic. Uh, drove down yesterday and this morning we were looking at uh, the different uh, loaders that we received quotes on. And then uh, I was having a meeting with um, the PLC project, the uh, consultant who is AE and Manitoba Water Services Board who's providing grant funding for that, and uh, Indus Automation who's the contractor. And uh, so most of the project is done. There's just a few uh, deficiencies that they're going through when our uh, water treatment plant operators are going through the alarm list. Um, right now the alarm list puts valve F903 or whatever so you have to check the drawing so they just want to um, name those so that they're easily understandable if you get the call at 2 in the morning that it's you know that effluent valve for filter 1 or whatever kind of thing so going through that once they have that list updated we'll get that done and then uh, there's one item uh, that we're just waiting for a cost on um, there's a circuit breaker and some wiring that needs to be updated to be brought up to code. Um, so we're just waiting for a cost on that that should be coming in shortly. And then uh, we had uh, our IT specialist just looking at the uh, wireless communication. Um, it seems like it's fine, but there was some faults with that. So we're just looking into that a little bit more from the well control building to the water treatment plant. And then uh, interviewing uh, summer students, because we're going to be quickly getting into the summer work, and uh, so we'll be busy with that, and done a few meetings um, regarding, uh, or meeting regarding the cemetery with uh, someone that's interested in doing some volunteer work out there, and uh, had the meeting with MTI to discuss uh, PTH 10 and 83 intersection. Uh, I discussed that a little bit earlier, just that uh, the engineers had to do their part to get it ready for the summer, but um, what exactly goes ahead will kind of depend on how our meeting goes with the minister, which is uh, for this Thursday that uh, we have a fair number of councillors that are attending. And uh, that's uh, the main topics. Okay, thank you. So moving on, uh, new business 7.1. Resolve the uh, sorry, resolve the grant request to the Swan Valley Citizens on Patrol program for covering rental fees at Veterans Community Hall Legion Room be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 7.2, result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2022 budget be accepted. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, go ahead. I guess I can answer any questions, if there is any. The just normal fluctuation, our, our amount is based on how many uh, development permits are taken out by each of the four municipalities. So. It fluctuates year to year, but the overall budget uh, is holding relatively uh, relatively the same. Um, other than that, okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Seven point three. Whereas the municipalities of the Swan Valley have for many years attempted to join together to form a board to focus on further developing the economy of the region. With these efforts taking the, taking the form of Swan Valley Economic Development Corporation Enterprise Center and most recently Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Stronger Economy, Arise. 
And whereas many feel outcomes from these efforts could be best be described as poor to moderately successful, and Swan Valley Rise currently finds itself in a crossroads in terms of a long-term funding, staffing, and local municipal support. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Swan River support a committee of Swan Valley residents be struck to review and report back to the four municipal government councils of the Swan Valley by November the 15th, 2022 on the future of municipal, municipally involved cooperative-based economic development. Further be it resolved that this Economic Development Review Committee operate according to the terms of reference attached hereto as Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, I guess I'd like to move to table this uh, until after the May uh, first or second meeting, whenever that meeting is, I think next Monday or two Mondays from now. Um, just because the the I think we want to all have all four municipalities passing the same resolution with the same uh, terms of reference as Schedule A, so that that we're all in agreement. And I think if if we wait until after that meeting, give us a chance to iron if there's any changes, modifications that come out of that meeting. Um, would give us a chance to incorporate those so that we're, we're all four municipalities are passing the same thing. Okay, so you move to the table, seconded by Councillor White. Okay. Discussion? Kyle, now you can have a discussion. Before I forget, under terms of reference, uh, one of the points you, that's mentioned here is spend a brief amount of time reviewing why the current RISE setup did not work well. Uh, just the semantics of that, how could we make the current how can we make a, a newer rise situation work well, as opposed to dwelling on what didn't work well? I just always struggle with the, the dark. And, and of course, how do you make it work well? It's always don't do this again, but there's semantics there that I, I prefer the positive. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor? I'm tabling, correct? I'm tabling, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> this will be tabled after the, uh, the G4. <clears throat> Thank you, and, and thank you, Councillor Delorier and, and the team there that had been working on that in terms of reference. 7.4, resolved that the results of the town survey regarding proposed improvements to PTH 10 and PTH 83 intersection be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I understand that we're having a, a meeting with the Minister of uh, MTI now um, later this week. Um, but what is Council's intention if that meeting doesn't go well, similar to the one that we had with the previous Minister, where they were going to rely back on the engagement survey that says this is what your people chose, this is what we're building, uh, we're moving forward. Um, if they don't want to have discussions or look at some hybrid model or no barriers and just left turn lanes, is <coughs> council in a position where we are ready to just block that development or that change and to save the the, uh, the businesses there or <coughs> um, are we going to let MTI continue on? Mr. Harvey? Uh, and you can definitely have a discussion on it, depending on that meeting, like if they do just say no, we're working ahead, then they would be asking for a resolution from us in support, uh, so that would be put to council whether to proceed or, or not to proceed, with, but to uh, support proceeding with it. And uh, one thing uh, that I should mention just from that meeting is uh, there was a change to their option A. Uh, which is the uh, protected lane with the concrete median where they moved the west end a little bit to the east um, so the undeveloped lot the access there doesn't change it would still be uh, uh, the access won't be very good you'd only get it when you're coming westbound but you would be able to turn into quick stop into their west entrance when you're traveling eastbound be able to come out of west out the west
west exit to quick stop and turn eastbound. So there's just a slight change to mm -hmm. the uh, um, median, whereas before it covered both exits, now it just covers the one. Um, but we can discuss that depending on how it goes with the minister if council doesn't get uh, what they're asking. For. Right, Councilor Duarte. I guess in response to Councillor Morio's question, my, my thoughts would be if if they choose to to want to proceed in in, a, in the in the foolish manner, so to speak, of, of putting concrete medians up there, I I would be in support of of passing resolution that we don't support that and leave the intersection as it is. You know, I, I think those medians bring their own set of safety concerns. They don't bring their own set of uh, you know nav. I, I I would say you know. For how much uh, they move opposition the there there was to a roundabout, that makes it even worse. And and even further to that, I'm sure the developer that's looking to develop on that corner Go is ahead. watching with bated breath as well what's going to happen here and whether whether they want to put their development on that corner. Um, I can't imagine that wanting to be landlocked or tying off half your uh, customer base by. Uh, by by not having allowing people to turn left, and even even just looking at it from a from a traffic perspective, you're you're, you're increasing pro maybe not double but you're increasing by a, a large threshold the amount of traffic going in through that intersection just for the fact that you're making them go through twice now. You got to go once to go to Formos and then back. Round, come back around. So it 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 causes all sorts of uh, you know there's all sorts of aspects of how that is not a better way to do it. You know, I, guess, I guess I'm not a traffic engineer, so I don't maybe see what they see, but I would be in support of not supporting what they're trying to do. Councillor White. Uh, absolutely. Uh, let, let's pretend Company X wanted to buy that lot, wants to employ 20, 25 people, wants to attract people to our community. What an economic boom, but to lose it all over 500 meters of whatever that aren't in many other places and it works well without them. So I'm constantly optimistic the government will realize that we can't afford to be losing uh, development over some silly engineer. I hope you guys are an engineer, engineer guy, girl. Council Bobbick. A lot of that was mentioned at the meeting about the traffic going in and other foremost. Uh, there was mention of the lot. Uh, it was noted that there would be no access allowed on traffic heading north into that vacant lot right now, that would never happen. So if this proceeds away, this drawing is, the only access <coughs> into that lot would be if you were heading west. So this was all been mentioned, but again, we were mentioning it to engineers, not the minister. So my personal feelings on that, if this does not change to any degree, I would not support any of this and just leave it the way it is. Okay, further discussion? So on the question on the uh, town survey results, all in favor? Are you asking a question? I just have one more comment. I just okay. wanted to make a comment to uh, Mr. Harvey and his team as far as putting together the survey, compiling the results. You know, it's kind of, you got a department to run and then the council kind of sometimes shoves these little projects on you, so you handled it well. Thank you. Thanks. Boy, part of the discussion. I hate assuming. Has this data been sent to the Minister of Highways? Yes. Okay. And then. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Where are we here? 7.5. Whereas the Bozeman Lines Club has rented the Veterans Community Hall on April the 30th, 2022 for the purpose of hosting a supper to support Ukraine. Therefore, be it resolved that the rental fees for this supper be covered by a grant from the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor uh, White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Any of those that put their hands up? We have Councillor White. I hope it's the beginning of many uh, opportunities for our community to help our Ukrainian neighbors. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight and 
Whereas on February the 23rd, 2022, Russian forces launched an unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in violation of international law, creating a crisis on a global scale, the likes of which, which have not been seen since World War II. And whereas the ongoing assault on Ukraine has forced hundreds of thousands of civilians to flee their homeland to seek refuge in other nations. Now, therefore, now, therefore, we, the, ta the Council of the Talisman of Verdue, hereby proclaim that we stand in solidarity with our Ukrainian friends and neighbors. We offer our support in whatever we can, way we can, hold the casualties of this violence close to our hearts and recognize the sacrifices <coughs> that are being made in the name of freedom and democracy in Ukraine. Slava Ukraine, glory be to Ukraine. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. <coughs> Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, it, just a semantics, when this was composed, it was hundreds of thousands, I think millions. <laughs> it's millions now. So I'm not sure, is it, do we have to make any major changes to put that word in there, millions of civilians? I does it change its intent? No. I don't think it does. No. Leave it alone. Okay. It's right, it's true. Further, di further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you, Council White. <coughs> 9.1. Resolved <laughs> that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28773 to number 28848, totaling $179,435.95 as listed on Schedule A. Pay, payroll accounts checks number 5075 to number 5082 totaling $88,862 or sorry 862 and 22 cents as listed on schedule B direct deposits totaling $775 as listed on schedule C and direct deposits totaling $52,108.06 as listed on schedule D Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? None? <coughs> All in favor? 9.2. Resolve the financial statements for the three months ending March 31st, 2022 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, <coughs> seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 9.3, result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2022 levy of $7,532.93 be approved for payment once the 2021 Audited financial statements have been received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. How long does that audited financial usually take? They're not usually done until summertime. Okay. 9.4. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on attached Schedule A totaling $2,937.02. .02. Therefore, it be resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding <coughs> tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that accrue, interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes, effective May the 1st, 2022. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by 
Councillor Bobbitt, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 9.5. Result of the following unpaid utility accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the said amount in the same manner as unpaid property taxes effective May the 1st, 2022. Utility account 111, 111340.03, $527.75. Uh, 1149 0100, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0, $0
40630.000 in accordance with sections <coughs> 4263 of the Town of Swan River Building Bylaw 2 2021 and subclause 2361B3 of the Municipal Act. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor White. So the home, uh, as was, was constructed, brought in, and it didn't ask for a building permit, so we're, we're going to fine them for that. I have to assume that the house has since been evaluated and it fits the standards of the town. Yeah, and if we want more details on it, we can discuss what Well, I'm not sure happy that it fits yeah. our, our priorities. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Councillor Morrow. Um, I would have some questions in camera for this, please. Okay, so then you want to just hold this vote off until after? No, I'm good with the, the vote, but I have some questions okay. in process here. All right, just remind me that when we go into camera then. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve the bylaw 12, 2022, to, sorry, 22 be a bylaw to amend the procedures bylaw, be read a second time. Moved by. Councillor Morio, seconded <coughs> by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Result of bylaw 17, 2022, being a bylaw to establish a crime prevention reserve fund, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. I guess just further to the question from uh, Mr. Bergen, it's $50,000 that'll be going into, the, into this reserve this year. Further discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. Which that $50,000 is a road and stone for every year. That's something we determined every year, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. How come I have a mover on here already? Sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. That's fine, I'll, I'll read it anyway so you can always fix it. Resolved that bylaw 18, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover, setting the rate of taxes for 2022, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, <laughs> seconded by Council uh, Deputy Mayor Juan Tony. Looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> All in favor? Carry on. Uh, 10.4. Resulted by law 19, 2022, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds the replacement of pumper one with all required equipment be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, Councilor Delorier. In the uh, public notice that we, that we is in our agenda, and I'm not sure if it's the same one that would have went out to, to the ratepayers. I I don't want to say that there's a mistake because I. I, but but I may be misunderstanding it. If you look in the public notice, it says that uh, that based on the 2022 assessment, a mill rate of 4.6 uh, mills will be required in each of the years 2024 through 2038. That can't I, I shouldn't say it can't, but the way I understand it, that can't be right because 4.6 mills at 195 million dollars would raise. Uh, would raise about nine hundred thousand dollars. We can't we can't be raising nine hundred thousand dollars in each of the years. So it must that must not be for that's how much it would take to pay it off in the first year, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Yeah. Harvey, we're gonna lose that here. So you just okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Did he hear any of that, Mr. Grita? I'm just uh, looking into it. Okay. <coughs> Go 
Go ahead. I, I guess while he's looking into that, I, my second comment is, um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I'm leaning towards not voting for this, but if I was, I would definitely want to see it. If if we have the ability to modify this to put it over over exempt properties as well, exempt properties versus non-exempt, it adds about forty million dollars of, of of assessment that we could apply this on, which is which is what about twenty uh, percent of. Uh, uh, so you're, you're spreading over 20% more assessment than, than the way it's written now. So, I, you know, this uh, this here payment alone adds another uh, about $90,000 next year to be able to take that down by 20, spread that over 20% greater assessment would be uh, would be beneficial. We're, we're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of other expenses coming up next year as well. Mm -hmm. um. I like uh, Council Irving. Sorry, uh, CFO Ganita, go. So yeah, uh, just looking at the Municipal Act, look at in order for it to apply to otherwise exempt prop, like all properties, including otherwise exempt properties, it would need to be done as a local improvement. And so, uh, Section three eleven of the Municipal Act. If approved by bylaw, municipality may undertake as a local improvement for the benefit of all or part of the municipality. And the, and the first part is what I was thinking, like infrastructure, the acquisition, development, upgrading, or replacement of one or more of the following sewage collection and treatment facilities, water supply treatment and distribution facilities, waste management facilities, highways, drainage systems, but then there's a, or any other project, the cost of which includes a capital component. So it does seem like we should be able to do it as a local improvement. Now, I've sent an email off to the municipal relations just to confirm that any other project, the cost of which includes the capital component, would apply to the pumper. So uh, if, if that gets confirmed, then we would need to do it as a local improvement. So we'd have to file a local improvement plan and uh, and so that this bylaw as it stands now we would not be able to proceed we'd have to do a new bylaw uh, with uh, doing it as a local improvement and that requires a different slightly different um, public notice we, we would have to redo the public hearing we would have to uh, give public notice for that public hearing and since it's a local improvement and it, it would affect the uh, uh, railway properties there's a requirement we'd have to send notify the railway company by registered mail at least 21 days ahead of the uh, public hearing but for a general borrowing we just need to advertise twice in the start times uh, 14 days before and seven days before but with a local improvement that affects a railway property we would have to send the registered mail to the railway property so it delay it's a little longer notification period and so if, if that's the route we, the council wants to go, then, then this bylaw doesn't proceed. It just dies where it is and it, it do a new bylaw. Okay, thank you. You have two questions. Yeah, yeah are you done? Yeah, uh, yeah, I also had the question, I guess, just more for curiosity on if I'm reading that correct on the notice saying that it's it's not going to take 4.6 mils each each of the years will it no it can't 4.6 mils comes up to nine hundred thousand dollars which is the cost of it and that, that must be a mistake I'm, I'm still just looking at that okay while you're looking at that uh councillor bobbitt I, I, so am I under the impression that if this resolution went through, that repairs of the town of Swan River would be buying a pumper that would protect properties that don't pay into it? Where is the local improvement would be in exactly. all properties? Yeah, that, that is a mistake. It, it would be 0.44 mils. Okay. Uh, Councilor Morio. Um, I guess, notwithstanding, I guess we got two issues to um, 
talk about, I guess, with this one, if we continue with this bylaw or repost it under a local improvement one um, for that. So, um, but I want to say my two cents anyway um, regarding it because it doesn't change um, the theory behind the whole process or, or the need. Um, speaking for myself as coming from an emergency services background, I guess I'm a little tainted towards it, but uh, um, we've been asked or it has been mentioned that uh, we should wait um, until fall to see what uh, our neighbors to the west are doing. Um, but I don't think we need to consider what they're doing because regardless, this is a, an equipment, we've got the responsibility of fire protection for the town and it's an equipment for, primarily for the town. If it benefits to the other areas through service agreements, it's great, but uh, we have our primary responsibility is to fire, provide fire protection to our residents within our boundaries. And at this point in time, if we are to follow the uh, NFPA guidelines that we are been uh, promoting to our neighbors to follow, um, this vehicle is due for replacement or past due, um, and coming up to its almost uh, complete life uh, style or life um, span. So. Um, irregardless, it, it needs to be replaced um, sooner than later because uh, as we've already um, seen in previ previous financial plans, um, we've kicked this can down the road t two, maybe three years already. Um, so we're getting pretty good at kicking cans down the road. Um, secondly, um, as regarding to seeing what the uh, outcome of the Swan Valley West does in their election, um, that brings up the question um, what they're doing with their fire department um, that they're trying to develop. Um, two scenarios play out. If there's a new council and they decide to terminate the moving forward with that fire department, um, then there's a complete reliance on our fire department which requires adequate equipment to provide that. So we need it. Uh, if nothing changes and a new or existing council continues to proceed with their fire department, um, they've made it known that uh, besides their wildlands unit that they currently have, they intend to use uh, a vehicle that's been in their mind in such poor condition that they lobbied the province of Manitoba to buy them another fire truck to replace it, but now they see fit to bring it to the residents on their central portion. Um, which can only be used as a defensive um, vehicle, um, a defensive firefighting uh, practice uh, vehicle, um, as stated by their uh, spokesman at one of our meetings, um, which then still requires us to have modern and effective equipment to, to deal with that if we're joining them on fire calls. Cause and then to rely on them to come in to the community or into the town to support us under service agreement or mutual aid, they're going to come with a substandard vehicle that we can't rely on to begin with. So we still need an, a new vehicle. So when you connect all the dots, we need the vehicle, regardless of what they're doing in my mind. So uh, yes, it's, it is a, a, a significant amount. Um, from when we first uh, started kicking this can around, um, each year this vehicle is increased in price from fifty to seventy-five thousand each year, which is extended to even probably get even worse as we know the supply chain supplies are going to get worse, even with an eighteen to twenty-four month build. So it's uh, um, it's it's with that. So. Um, so yeah, so I don't disagree, it, it, it's a large amount, um, but uh, uh, if we keep pushing this can down the road, it's gonna bump up against some future um, large expenditures that we're gonna have where we may see some ugly um, rate increases of 13% again, if we're gonna have looking at two years down the road or even a year down the road with the arena or with a four or $5 million uh, repair there along with uh, other, uh, project coming up like the lagoon expansion um, so 
It's also been referred to as, um, every time we talk about this and it comes to decisions, uh, we have uh, people asking uh, what additional information. They, 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 uh, the comments come that the, uh, it's hard to make a decision because uh, we need additional information. Uh, it would be helpful uh, to provide uh, the fire chief and protective services committee the uh, uh, what additional information you're looking for uh, so that we can answer that okay um, but uh, in closing I just I'm not prepared to put risk property or put more importantly lives in jeopardy or at risk um, due to us uh, kicking this can or delaying this purchase uh, any longer um, as we're a department that follows uh, national um, NFPA standards and we got a fire truck, our mainline truck is a, about to time out in less than two years so uh, I think we need to be ahead of this curve instead of behind it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Delorier. <clears throat> Um, Councilor Morio did a good job of laying out uh, two, two options of what may happen um, based on a lot of it uh, based on hearsay. We don't know what Small Valley West is going to do, but there is a third scenario that may play out. Um, and it's, it's based on hearsay that's probably just as valid as, as the hearsay that Councilor Morio uh, based his uh, two options on. There's a, the third option is the fact that Small Valley West. In, in their request to form a fire department, it may be also looking at buying another pumper. Hopefully, after elections, cooler has prevailed and there isn't two fire departments. Now all of a sudden, we have two municipalities that have bought two new pumpers. That, that, that's my concern. And you know, to, to, to say that that's not going to happen, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen over there, and I've heard I've heard both scenarios laid out from councillors uh, at that table. So I guess I'm looking at this from a valley-wide perspective. For two municipalities, to spend two million dollars on pumpers when all you got to do is wait eight months and see. Uh, that that that's where I'm coming at that from. I'm not saying we don't need it or we won't ever buy it. That's that'd be what it, where I'm looking at it from. Councilor Yes, I agree. I, I really don't base my decisions on what our neighbors do or stuff. That's totally their business, and they can do whatever they want. But at the same time, I understand that this needs something that that our community needs, and I, I, I rank our fire department very highly in how they managed over the years and the equipment and the budget. But I guess one of the things that I'm going with is right now, if this was a beginning of an election or of a term would be a totally different story but but for a matter of eight months to make a decision to let in whatever council sitting at this table at that time to make the, uh, a decision for a matter of 15 years I don't think it's fair to the next council whoever's sitting at this table to make that decision right now also moving forward which is what Councilor Delorier said I would really not want to spend the money that it our ratepayers have to pay a higher rate to protect properties that aren't paying into it. So I think it really needs to be for a serve, not fee for service, I guess they would call it, or special service tax. Okay, for the discussion. Councilor Moore. Um, just uh, to Councilor Bobbick's concern about uh, not wanting to make a decision to tie a future council's decision. This, con this decision is here and now. It's our responsibility to make that decision. Uh, if we wanted to hold off all major decisions in the last year of a term, um, to not tie off future councils, the fourth term would become a useless term for council. Like, we're here to make decisions in the now uh, for the best of our community. Go ahead. So I guess, what is the longest time we can keep the pumper we have now? <coughs> what is the exact date that it's outdated, can't go down the road? Chief Mr. Ford, Chief of Orchard. By NFP standards, three years ago, 
when I was 25 years old, or two years ago. Oops. That wasn't, that wasn't the impression uh, I got. But the, the, the complete end of life is 30 years. So, so, if you take, so if you take in a two year build time, 18 months, if we're to order, say this fall, you're looking sometimes later 2024, which puts the truck at 29 and some years. And the, and the standards are 25 years, is that the, what I'm getting? Uh, yeah, at FUS and NFPA uh, recognize uh, trucks as uh, end of life of 25 years, completely done at 30. Okay, so and is there, so I guess you must have some kind of carryover if you meet a certain standard. You, you must have to test it or something, do you? It was uh, all included in that package I sent. The bus standards yeah, yeah. for a small community was 20, 20 plus five years, so 25 years. Thank you. Okay, further discussion? Go ahead. I, I, I guess there's two issues here on whether to go ahead with it and how we're going to go ahead with it, whether well, it's this, going to be... This is the first reading. Right, but there's no point. If we're going through the local improvement process, why even... Well, why I, even do the first well, reading? That, I was, that's what I was going to ask council. Like, if, if you're thinking about having it changed to the local improvement or how, however it's paid for, then you have the option right now of having this tabled and having uh, CFO Grita uh, reach out to, uh, to the people that he needs to find out the details on it. And then, if that's the route the council wants to go, then you can vote on it at a next council meeting. Councilor White. I so move. So you're moving to table. Yep. Okay. Second to table. So, <clears throat> so we're tabling it to have CFO Ganita look at the taxation. The part taxation the levy. Yes. Yeah, the local improvement process. Is that why? That's the purpose of that. Yeah, we have more money coming in. Okay. Or I mean, we can have a discussion. How long would that take? Um, Mr. Ganita, how long would that uh, take for you to get that information together? Uh, well, it depends how soon I get a response from the province, but as soon as I get the response from affirmative response from the pro province, then I can prepare everything. And, and as I mentioned, it requires a registered mail to CN. 21 days ahead of the public hearings. So, we, so that would be potentially at two. least a month. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Memorial. So I guess <clears throat> what I guess what Councilor Bob is asking or uh, way up or what I'm, I'm interpreting it with the question is is if that's going to take a month to do that, um, are we proceed are we looking to proceed with this? Because there's no sense in having administration go through that process if we're not looking to proceed with the purchase. So we're trying to put part two ahead of part one of are we actually going to do this or not. Like so I don't know if we need to let the, this die and pass a resolution that we instruct administration to proceed with that option to keep the ball rolling or how does that work? Councilor Bobbitt? Uh, with that, if it went that route, I would support the motion on that fact. So. Councilor White. As I understand the discussion, if we go this path, that will give access to more funds to reduce the impact on purchasing this. Fine, that's, that's my thought. So we have a motion on the table to table this resolution or this. I'll second that motion. Okay, so we have a second, so then all in favor of that. <coughs> I don't know what the motion is. It's to all confusing. To table, table right now so that Mr. Ganita can find all the information <clears throat> out as far as the taxation or the levy piece of it, and then we'll vote on it. Uh, obviously, at after a hearing, it will be uh, set forth because we'd have to make note to all the interested parties in order to have that hearing. And that would be roughly in about a month's time. So, so. so we are. Purchasing. So, well, we haven't decided that. We, we just decided to table this this bylaw. The question is, are we going to have administration go through all this? Um, 
with the possibility or of us. Right now we have a, a motion to table. Okay. That's what we have. And the question is, is if, if the, that can't be much of the discussion yeah. beyond that. So if there is no further discussion, I'll ask for the vote. So all in favor of tabling. It's carried, so it'll be tabled. Ten point five resolved in bylaw twelve two thousand and twenty two being a bylaw to amend the procedures bylaw be read a third time and passed. Moved by no, oh, Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. Recorded vote. All in favor? It's unanimous. Carried. 10.6 resolved the bylaw 17 2022 being a bylaw to establish a crime prevention reserve fund be read a third time and passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. It's unanimous. Already, no notice of motion. Result of pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have the handy transit van and building permit added to taxes. And I believe that <coughs> Councillor Bobbick wanted to add a uh, uh, discussion uh, for in regards to employee matters. Okay, employee matters. And I had. <coughs> And you had which? On that building permit. Oh, the building permit, That's right. On there. Yeah, right, sorry, it's right on there. Uh, further discussion? Oh, no, I need a mover. I need a mover. Uh, uh, mover. <laughs> Councillor Friesen, it's getting late. Uh, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Resolved this regular meeting of council now will be adjourned at 10.02 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? 